Okay then, so I run a pool the other day on my community posting. A lot of people were still asking for a standard home emulator, so I thought to myself, let's do ZX Spectrum again. I last did a Spectrum emulation setup guide around a month ago, and I know some people get on with Spectaculator, but some others don't. They do agree that it costs money to uh, use it, which is understandable given that there's a lot of emulators, such as the one I'm using today, for free. So this tutorial is going to be looking at likely the oldest emulator, this is Fuse. This was originally created for Linux Unix type operating systems, but over the years it's become available on pretty much every platform in existence. If we just scroll down here, you can see the extensivity of different platforms Fuse is available on. It's literally got everything. So links in my description is always for this tutorial setup guide. Now we're going to want to be working with the Windows installation just here since I'm using a Windows 11 computer. There's two here's which are highlighted for a hyperlink once you hover over them. The one you need is just here. Don't download utilities, you don't need that one. This is a basic uh, setup guide so just press left on here and this is going to take you to SourceForge. So it's going to begin a little countdown. Sometimes it gets stuck once it reaches zero. So if that's the case, just go back and repeat what I just showed you. And for Windows 11, you'll get a little pop-up just here saying that it might be dangerous, but this one's very trusted. So keep. And this is going to be downloading an exe file, which is an installation file for Windows. You also notice it says Win32, so if you're running a 64-bit operating system like I am, that's no problem. This one's also compatible with Win64 systems. So let's just double left click on this and install it. So next, and if we take a look just here, it's going to tell us all the extension files for our games that this Fuse emulator supports. So you've got the obvious in there, you've got TAPS, TZX, and SNA SNAP files. So Fuse undoubtedly supports the lot. So press next on here and your next screen is going to be where you want this installed. I'm going to just leave this as default in my C drive program files. Obviously if you want this installed elsewhere just press on browse and then just navigate to where you want the installation to go. So like I say for me I'm going to just leave this as a default pretty much. So install and you'll notice next you've got a little shortcut of the iconic Spectrum 48K appeared on your desktop. So I'm going to press finish and it's going to open up this emulator as checked. And there we go. So I'm also going to show you something very cool for this tutorial that maybe some of you might be aware of, maybe some of you might not be aware of. I've got Dizzy here. This is a 2020 release. Uh, by the Oliver Twins who helped design this game. So this is an actual legit release. So as we can see under here, we've got game designers, Philip Oliver and David Oliver. So let's download this. And this is going to be for the tutorial to set up, showing you how to work this. And if we just go to the download tab here, it's then going to download another zipped file. So let's just open that up and like I said just now TAP is a very common file extension for Spectrum games so this is clearly a TAP file so just drag that onto the desktop and I'm going to close down my web browser so be sure to check out the Dizzy fan site it's very good and if you dig deeper into it you can actually download and print off the inlays for this new Dizzy game as well when you can also technically transfer this dot tap onto a real cassette tape if you really want to. So let's delete this exe file because we no longer need that one. Now this game, what I've just downloaded this Dizzy, is actually for 128k Spectrum models and you'll notice just here that it says Spectrum 48k. So obviously if we run this 128k whilst 48k is on, it's not going to work and I'll show you how I mean by this. So if we go to file, open and look for that file which in my case is on desktop. If I just double left click. So there we go. So let's just close this down and you can actually change the machine. 
So we open Fuse back up again. And if we go to Machine and go to Select, from here you've got all your different Spectrum models. So 16K, 48K, 128K, and then the uh, Alan Sugar years of the pluses and everything like that. So we're looking for 128K, so I'm going to just left click on this one, press OK, and we can see this has now changed the operating system, and it's also displaying Spectrum 128K. So if we go back to File, Open, let's load up this Dizzy game again. Boom! Okay, so as always, I'm using my trusty PlayStation 3 controller, which is wired, and I highly recommend one of these. They're really good for this sort of thing. So, as per a Spectrum game, you're going to get a little option to begin with how you want to play this, normally by keyboard, uh, Sinclair Stick, or Kempston. My preference is Kempston, because I know that most Spectrum games will work with a Kempston expansion. So let's change some settings. So if we go to options here, and if we go to peripherals and general, if we just click on Kempston joystick and press OK, and go back into options, joysticks, and I'm gonna just press joystick one, and also set this one to Kempston. I'm gonna press OK. And if we press number one here to go into the control menu. So from here, you're going to see our different options, how we want to play Dizzy. So Kempston is going to be number two. And now I'm going to press X on my PS3 controller. And as you can see, this one is now working. Gosh, Pogi, that really shook the hut. Are you okay? Squeak. So that's it, a brand new, well, almost brand new, Oliver Twins endorsed Spectrum Game of Dizzy. And this one's pretty cool. It's not all black and white. There's a lot of colors in it. So that's that element cleared up, how to get your games to your controller running with Fuse. I'm going to tell you here that Fuse doesn't support full screen. And I think that's one of the disadvantages with it but apart from that Fuse is a very capable really versatile emulation system and of course it's free so to make your screen bigger knowing that it doesn't actually support a full screen as it were it's going to be window modes if we go to options and from here if we just go to filter you're going to have a lot of different scaling options here so the one I've just used to make it big as possible is under TV or the generally the two times, three times, four times, that's gonna blow up the size of the window. But you can also do things like scan lines, that type of thing. So let's try Super Eagle and see what this one does. So it's minimized the window a little bit, but as we can see, it's added a slight blur to it, so that pixelation is now kind of gone. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I did do another Spectrum emulator a little while back was spectacular but to be fair this I kind of agree with a lot of people out there who've said on different social media that Fuse is free and it's more versatile there's more options but the only thing it doesn't feature is obviously the full screen uh, you can get in large screen sizes but it's only window full screen so some people might be a bit put off by that but give it a try and links in my description and if you've not checked out the spectacular spectacular emulator tutorial i will also leave that in my description for this one so you could check that one out so until next time stay retro